It's been a while since I've had time to work on the mill shed and to finish the storage room, but I've got the rest of the screws in. These boards have dried out and shrunk with temperatures well over 100 degrees and hot winds. These boards will definitely dry out and you can see that they have definitely shrunk some. I only put one screw, or rather Wayne did, in the middle. Then I came back and I put the screws on the outer edges. So all of the boards are on and I'm getting ready to build the doors. I have the opening is already sized up and I've got the trim on. These will be two doors. They'll swing out and they're just going to be a, a barn door. Nothing, nothing very fancy. I have some 8 foot 1 by 12s that are pretty clear. Maybe a few little places in them. There's a pitch pocket that I'm going to use to build the doors. There'll be two doors and they'll swing out. Just a a barn style door nothing fancy i've got one of the doors built and hung i've still got the other one to do which i'll try to get done today and get up i've got three hinges on it it's a little bit heavy for a, a door but i was able to get it up without much problem you can see i had to put a piece on here because i wanted the door to be back even with the uh, door jam itself and the hinges are uh, not exactly mounted i actually chiseled in so that, that hinge would be mortised into the the trim this is the inside of the door i put three cross pieces on it and i glued them and, and screwed them on really well and then i put two z bars pushing up from the hinge now a lot of people get these backwards but if you're pushing up from the the bottom side of the door with your z bar it actually carries the, the weight and pushes up on it, keeps it from sagging. I'm getting ready to uh, put the cross pieces on, the braces to hold it together, and I'm holding back five eighths of an inch from this edge so that I can put my door stop in there. And I've got it on my line, and I'm going to lay some glue on here pretty liberally. This will be what actually holds the boards together. I've got that clamped. I'm just going to put the some inch and a half finish nails in there before I screw it on. I should hold it. There's uh, six screws in each board, and with the glue, that should keep everything held together pretty good. At least I hope so. You can see I have the bracing Z-bar laid up here. I've already scribed it here, and I made a mark lined right up with the mark that I made on the cross piece. And I did the same thing up here. I made a mark there. And on the lower side, I've got a little tiny mark. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up. And I'll turn you over on your head. And I've got another mark right there. And I'll just connect the dots, which I've already done. And uh, I've got a line across here. And I'll just cut that with a skill saw.
I put a nail in that just to kind of hold it there so it doesn't move around on me. I'm making sure when I put these on, all of them, I'm catching both edges of the of the Wuma 12, so I have a good solid connection there on it. Okay, I've got the door all put together. I went ahead and put the hinges on and the little pieces that the hinges actually set on to keep the door back flush with the edge of the jam. So now let's see what I can do about getting it up in the hole. If you ever run into a situation where you've got to put the door up and uh, you don't know exactly where the hinges will be, what I've done, I've cut a little strip here and from here to here is the thickness of the door. So I just set that back. It would work as a temporary door stop. And I've done the same thing down here at the bottom. And I can let the door set against that and I can put wedges in here on the, on the side, edge of the door and I can get it where it needs to be. I've got another one right here where I can drive a wedge right in here. And also then on the floor, I've got a couple wedges for it to sit on and I can drive them in to raise it or pull them out to lower it. That way I can pretty much get the door where I need it to be. Okay, I've got the second door up and what I did, you can see the little wedge at the bottom that actually holds it up and I've got one over here at the bottom and one at the top and two on the sides. And that held the door in place so that I could actually just, I didn't even have to take the door back out. I just folded the flange over and scribed around it and chiseled it in and put the screws in it. Now I can take those uh, wedges out and hopefully it'll, it'll work. Well, I've taken the wedges out from around the door. We'll see how it works now. Yep, I think it'll work. I've got wedges here just to hold this door still. I think it'll work. It's really nice to be able to work in the shade in the summertime and that's what I'm taking advantage of this morning is getting as much of this on as I can. So I'm going to measure each one of these. Uh, there's just four long batten strips and then there's seven little short pieces that will go up above the door. Okay. And 15. I'm going to write this down here so I don't forget it. Ninety four. Okay, I'll cut those and get them up.
I started putting the batten strips on. I went ahead and trimmed this little window out and run the batten strips around it. I still got this side to go, but this is in the sun and it's rather hot today. But I did earlier get the little strips on the upper side of the water table. I put a water table up there, it's cut on 12 degree angle. Put the upper boards down to it. And I got all the screws in. As I mentioned, we put these up, they were not quite dry. They are now for sure. Got these all cut and I'm gonna get them put up and be pretty close to calling this a wrap. The batten strips that I'm using are uh, two and three quarters of an inch wide. I kind of like that width. It seems to work well. It looks nice. What I do when I, I'm getting ready to put these on, I don't know if you can see that little mark right there. I plumb down. I've got a mark at the top. I measure over from the center of the gap between the boards an inch and three eighths and uh, just use a long level. and. Uh, make my marks down through there. It's kind of hard to see them with that grain like it is. And I kind of know where to look for it. Also, I did the 30 degree bevel at the very bottom. Just a little bit of the detail that I like to do. Okay, so I've pretty much got the outside done. Got all the batten strips on. I'll just do a real quick walk around here. I'm happy with the way it turned out. All this lumber, everything we used here, all the timbers, uh, the one by twelves, everything was sawed on the uh, on the HM one twenty six Woodland Mill sawmill. This has really been a blessing. I've really enjoyed it. It's already sawed a lot of lumber. I'll show you one thing I did. I put a couple of the slide barrel latches there at the bottom to hold the doors together and I put a hasp on it just to be on the safe side. I got a box in the mail the other day and this is uh, from Eric at a farm west of Boring. That's his channel name and I always like to hear him say farm west of Boring where it's anything but boring. But I know what's in this but you don't. So I'm going to open it up show you what I got. There's a note here that says, thank you for watching a farm west of Boring where life is anything but boring. And what I have is a brand new Woodland Mills cap or hat some people call them a hat this is what i call a hat but i won this in his 500 uh, subscriber giveaway and if you don't have his channel i suggest that you go and watch his channel subscribe to him and give him some support he's got a, a woodland mills hm 130 and he's also building a, a sawmill shed but I won something other than an argument, and I'm so thankful for the cap, Eric. Appreciate you, brother. And I'm going to put this on my head. Now, I've got a head shaped like a sweet potato that grew between two rocks, so I'll have to adjust this just a little bit to fit my head. There. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate you.